When I was 12 years old, I lived on Tamarind Avenue in Hollywood, right near Santa Monica Boulevard. On the next street was Bronson Avenue. There was a studio called Pacific Title and, and, Art, and Art that was owned by Leon Schlesinger. He made all the titles for Warner Brothers and he also did newsreels, uh, uh, developed newsreels. He had a lab. And on that lot was two houses. The house in front uh, housed several artists, one woman, I believe her name was Thelma, and uh, uh, the, the house behind was uh, the Wanless family, uh, Ewell Wanless and Verda, and they had four daughters. Uh, uh, Ewell was the foreman of the lab, and he rented the house from, his, uh, the, from Mr. Schlesinger. And the oldest daughter, Beth, used to take me into the studio, into the first house where uh, the artists were. It's amazing that they let kids in, but they did. And there was this one woman, uh, Thelma, who did the airbrush on the titles. She had two desks. One desk, she did a scene of animation. In those days it was Bosco and Honey and and uh, their dog, Bluto, I believe it was. Uh, and uh, uh, when she didn't have any airbrushing to do, she would move to her desk and paint animated cartoons, uh, the cells. And that was so fascinating to me because I used to see the cartoons in the movie, in the movie houses and that I had no idea how they were made. And every uh, day or so, they used to send uh, a scene of animation from the harmonizing studio that was on Hollywood Boulevard at the time. Well, I would try to ingratiate myself with her. So I, when she was at the other desk of doing her airbrush, I would wash out her paint jars and I would put her cells in order. For some reason, she could not keep her they were all numbered, but she could never keep them in order. She put them any which way. So I used to straighten that up from her, for her and then uh, clean her brushes, and she'd let me watch her paint. And one day, uh, she wasn't feeling well. And she uh, told me, when the paint dries, put them in order, that messenger will come and get them, and I've already called them and told them that I'm going home, I'm not well. And, and so will you please take care of this for me? She says, the thing is, I didn't finish. There were 200 cells, but there were about 20 that I didn't finish one color. And I already told them about it, so everything's okay. Well, I'd also, what I used to do on that lot, is I used to run errands for the fellows. They didn't, they didn't have uh, uh, wagons in those days that brought food. And so I used to get them Cokes and candy and sodas, things like that. And every, uh, at the end of the week, they all gave me a little tip. And uh, that was fine. I felt like I was helping the family. I would bring them whatever money I got, I would bring it home. Just, anyway, uh, I was waiting for the paint to dry and uh, I noticed it was just one color left, the white. She left out the eyes, the collar, and the, and the gloves. You know, the gloves were always white. And so I, I painted that. I thought, I'll help her by painting that. Here I am. By this time, I was about 15. And uh, so I painted the scene, and then let it dry, and when the messenger came at 5.30, I gave it to him, and everything was fine. But then I started to worry. Gee, what if I made a mistake? She would really be angry at me. Oh, I was so sorry, I didn't do just what she told me to do. And I worried half the night about it. 
The next day, I waited for her. As soon as I went down to the corner, she, I know she used to get off at, at Santa Monica Boulevard on a streetcar, Santa Monica and Bronson. And as, she's, as she got to be about six feet from me, I blurted out, Thelma, I finished your scene. Well, I could see the color leave her face. She just turned white. Oh my gosh, she said. Why did you do that? If you made a mistake, I'll get in all kinds of trouble. And she ran up to the house and she ran to the phone and she called Harmonizing. And uh, immediately they told her, oh, the scene was fine. We had, in fact, the camera had to shoot that last night and it's fine. So she said, wow, don't ever do that again. Well, Mr. Schlesinger must have heard about that because he came every single day, drove up in his Cadillac, and dressed to the nines with a carnation in his buttonhole of his coat. He, he wore a hat and a suit and a tie all the time and smelled of yardly cologne. And he came up the stairs instead of going to his office. And he looked at Thelma and he nudged her and I was there. And she, he said, is this the kid that finished your scene? And she said, yes, but she promised she wouldn't ever do that again. And he said, that's okay. You teach her how to paint. And Martha, when you grow up, I'll give you a job in my cartoon studio. <laughs>